welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today we welcome back on the show Therese Zink. She is a family physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article Dog Poop, The Social Contract, and Pandemic Behaviors. Therese, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Kevin. So I was talking to you a little bit less than a year ago. I had just published a book, COVID Chronicles, How Essential Workers Cope. And I didn't expect to be talking about that same topic a year later. In fact, I'm thinking of doing the second volume because we're, we're still trying to cope. But of course, you know, you and I have never lived through a pandemic before. Mm-hmm. So we are learning as we're going. And as your, your blog post and your, you know, your website shows, Essential workers are exhausted and they're pretty. And that's what led me to writing uh, the story that you accepted. So the the story uh, is about scooping dog poop. Mm -hmm. And I have had a dog and I walk my dog in public parks. And part of the, uh, the reality of having a dog and walking in public parks, as opposed to just being on a farm, is that I scoop the poop to make it nice for everybody else Mm -hmm. because you know, nobody likes to step in it and carry it home on their shoe. And so if you have a dog, there's really a social contract that you scoop your poop. Although, you know, we dog walkers know that not everybody does, should we remind them to. And then there are a few people who bother to put their dog poop in a plastic bag, but they leave it along the side of the path. Mm. And I always wonder what they're thinking, who they think is going to come and pick that up. So that led me to my uh, story about uh, the reality of the social contract for physicians or health professionals that I agree to do my very best to uh, care for patients, to uh, deal with whatever their illnesses, honor their wishes, and not take advantage of them, Mm. not do tests that may benefit me, do things that will benefit me, but it's my professional behavior. And so many of us go into caring for patients at this very difficult time, frustrated when patients are not getting vaccines, are not getting their boosters, are not wearing masks, are going to large gatherings. And it really raises how committed am I to that professional contract. Now, I am not on the front lines. I'm not working in the emergency room. I'm not in the hospital these days, but I am working at a clinic in middle school and high school, and Mm -hmm. we see plenty of COVID there. A more vulnerable population who's more dependent on what their parents are having them do. But we see sick teachers, we see, you know, frustrated teachers and counselors, and it's it's not a pretty picture at this point. And in the outpatient clinic, I have plenty of patients who uh, refuse to get take the vaccine or the booster that I'm offering them. Mm-hmm. So these are tough times, you know, and in primary care, I'm used to living with uncertainty, which we seem to be doing a lot of, you know, right now, given that COVID is, you know, we don't know what science will tell us to do or undo. And that's pretty hard to live with. And living with that uncertainty really requires trust. You know, as a primary care physician, I walk with people through uncertainties about their illness. I send them to a specialist who doesn't know what's going on either. And, you know, the patient and I continue to walk through the uncertainties. But you have to have a basic trust there. And that's really kind of what's missing in our in our world today. And it makes it very difficult for all of us. Now, you mentioned that word trust, and that word certainly is in short supply, especially during the pandemic. And you see a lot of confrontations between healthcare professionals and patients over issues like masking and the vaccine. Now, over the past year since we last spoke, tell me how you're observing that trust being further deteriorated. Give us some stories or examples that that you've seen in the clinical settings that you practice in. So, you know, when I have talked to patients about getting vaccines and they say they're not interested, I always inquire why, you know, and, you know, it's no news to you that social media is a real problem in that regard. Mm -hmm. And people find lots of reasons to have the wrong information and to be distrusting. So, you know, that is a reality. The other reality is, is there's some populations who have good reason not to trust science. 
you know, we think of Tuskegee, we think of radiation experiments in cities like Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, years ago. And I think there's a lot of effort, I would like to call it good faith effort, to inspire trust in those populations. But it is quite frustrating as a healthcare provider to see people who are more willing to believe some of the misinformation that is out there. And sometimes it's a very emotional reaction. You know, right now we're uh, watching the trucker strikes mm -hmm. in Ottawa, Canada, and in Detroit, and even in Europe, you know, and so it feels like a real erosion of that social contract or goodwill and uh, caring about each other, as opposed to what I want or what I need. So you talk about the effects of the pandemic on the healthcare professionals and how their morale is deteriorating. Now, talk to me since we last spoke, how is that lack of trust? How is that affecting the psyche of medical professionals today? So I think some are quitting. You know, we have a, a lack of nurses. Burnout is a real uh, reality. And the group that I have a lot of contact with these days because I am teaching are pre-med students and also medical students. The pre-med students are still very idealistic and very excited about caring for people and helping them be healthy. But a group of them is doing a project on burnout. They are doing a survey of burnout on a federally qualified uh, health center organization here. And they are asking themselves, why am I signing up for this profession. You know, I'm paying lots of money mm -hmm. to uh, go to medical school, years of study. Is this really what I'm going to be getting into? And, uh, you know, they still have high hopes. So I think that reality is frustrating to the students. How, how will they move forward? How one asked me yesterday, you know, how will I keep myself? You know, no is a good word. And moving forward, you know, self-care is important, but, uh, you know, the systems are stressed and strained and also need to find ways to assure the health of healthcare workers. So that, you know, erosion of trust, erosion of, you know, public goodwill is, is really a challenge these days. And there are no easy answers, unfortunately. So when these students come to you and ask about that tension about going into a profession that they have to work so hard for, but it's a profession where so many physicians are burning out. What kind of answers do you give these students to try to resolve that tension? So I think I help them understand kind of the challenges of healthcare today, that uh, in some ways it's a big business and that there are motivations that may not be for the best interest of the patient. I think we talk a bit about uncertainty and, you know, what it means to live with uncertainty as science evolves. You know, my career started with AIDS and we were only beginning to identify the virus. We had none of the antiviral medications. In fact, when I learned to do, uh, draw blood, I didn't use gloves. So as a resident, I had to learn to start IVs and draw blood with gloves, which of course you'd never think of not using now. And there is advice that I gave 20 years ago that was the wrong advice. So I think it's part of understanding how science works, mm -hmm. that it's an evolution. Uh, and that, so that would be the one point. The other point is the importance of self-care, that you want to, to do your homework. Uh, you want to always be learning because medicine and science is changing and you also need to answer ultimately to yourself and to, to take that personal time to say, take those sick days. If you're sick, you know, don't go into work. And some of that is not new advice. It's just a reminder of, you know, what we have been saying uh, for years and how, how it's more important than ever these days. We're talking to Therese Zink. She is a family physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Dog Poop, The Social Contract and Pandemic Behaviors. Therese, we're speaking in the middle of February and it seems like we're entering a new phase of the pandemic where a lot of states are slowly starting to open up again. And I want to get back to that issue of trust. Can this be a turning point in how we can regain the trust between healthcare professionals and patients? And what are some ways that you would suggest to help regain that trust that's been lost during the pandemic? 
so I think, you know, open, honest communication and uh, developing uh, relationships with a primary care provider or your primary care provider and uh, realizing that, you know, we are part of a society and in being part of a society, we do have some obligations and we are not out of this pandemic. You know, we know that COVID will replicate into something else. You know, I know it's quite frustrating for patients to get vaccinated and boosted and and get sick when they were told that they were not going to get sick. In fact, many of the uh, healthcare workers are now needing sick time that they didn't need six months ago because they have done everything that they were supposed to, but but they have gotten sick. And so I guess the advice that I give, if we're supposed to wear masks, do wear masks. I know I still will continue to do that, of course, in the healthcare setting. And when I am in areas with gathered with lots of people that I don't know their status, I, I wear my mask at the gym. And that people should still get vaccinated and get boosted. And honor the advice that our, the best science that we have right now is giving us, realizing that we are in a process of learning as we go, which is a hard place to be. You know, it's hard to live with uncertainty when we're a world that really likes things to have clear boundaries. And it's just not how it's going to be right now. And Kevin, hopefully we won't be talking about the same topic in another year. <laughs> and my final question, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? So I would encourage people to, yes, you know, wear a mask if you're told to, to get your vaccinations and get boosted. You can sign on for your own home tests at the federal website. Many states are also making uh, testing available so you can make sure you're safe to be with family and friends. And spread a little kindness. We, we need that and we need to share that with each other these days. And how can people reach you? So I have a website, Kevin, it's TheresaZink.com, and that's T-H-E-R-E-S-E-Z-I-N-K. Thanks for talking to me again. Therese, thank you so much for coming back on the show and sharing your time and insights.